computer. Lights? People were like, what's well, the most the most emotional experience to bring them on set? It was like, no, it's terrifying because we have good to go. Picard season three showrunner Terry Metalis may have been terrified when he reunited the crew of the USS Enterprise D on board the USS Enterprise D, rebuilding the iconic ship's bridge for just two days of actual filming. But that was only part of the process when it came to telling the final Jean-Luc Picard story, a tale that began with the launch of Star Trek The Next Generation 35 years ago, but that's seemingly now finally over. To me, it was just like there's no better way to end than at the beginning, right? It turns out that there was only one way that Jean-Luc's story could close out as far as Metalis was concerned, but it wasn't always an easy road to get there. Make it so. This is how the last Picard story happened. Metalis has made no secret of being a lifelong Star Trek fan. His professional credits go as far back as Star Trek Voyager and Star Trek Enterprise, so the fact that he would have strong feelings on how Picard's journey should wrap up is no surprise. And besides, what fan wants to kill off their heroes anyway? It is, yeah. It's a surprise ending that it's a happy ending. That's right. Picard lives in the end. Everyone lives, in fact. Yeah, I never, I didn't, I never had the heart to kill anybody. I, I, we, we never, I, I always knew we were going to end on the poker game. I don't have it in me to kill Captain Kirk and put him under a pile of rocks. I don't, I don't have that in me. I think there's very few um, heroic deaths that are, that actually work in the pantheon of, of genre. Yes, Jean-Luc and Riker and Beverly and Worf and Jordy and Data and Troy all get a happy ending. But Metalis says that the possibility of killing off Picard was at least discussed with Patrick Stewart. The thing is, beyond the showrunner's love of the character, there were a couple of barriers to doing so. You know, at one point Patrick asked me and I was like, maybe if they hadn't killed him in season one, you know? But it's also hard to tell a story about a father and a son connecting and then off him immediately. Like you kind of want the hope of they they would have some time to sit down in a library and get to know each other afterwards. But I did want the audience to think that I was going to do it. So I did bake in several scenes that you would see in a finale. It's been an honor serving with you all. Thank you all for serving with me. The Riker Wharf. It is a fine day indeed to die with honor. Uh, the little looks at Deanna, because one, it raises the stakes. It, it puts a, the audience that sense of unease, like they might do that. That was kind of, I suppose, the, the cheap manipulation that I, was, that I was employing. Which is how I know that the time has come. In fact, one of those moments led to a particularly terrific Patrick Stewart line, where he thinks he's saying goodbye to Riker and Worf forever. Well, thank you. I, it means so much to me. We were all like, holy shit. You know that I know. And then we yelled cut. And then uh, I remember Frakes, Frakes and I both went, whoa, what was that like after that? And, and, and Patrick, Patrick knows when he's done it, done a, it, it done something pretty spectacular and he has a smile and a little, little shake of the head. It was pretty, it was pretty great. It, it's hard to ask one of your childhood heroes to go there. Right. And, and I have, you know, as a director, that's my job, right? I'll be like, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit more vulnerability. And, and, and he looks at you like, all right, kid, you want to see vulnerability, you know? Um, and, and then he gives you that and it's, and it knocks your socks off. It's, it's, it's a hell of a thing. Even rebuilding the Enterprise D wasn't easy, but Metallus insisted that they find the money to do it. The, I mean, they certainly financially probably would prefer that it did not happen. <laughs> no, it was always, we had to do it. We had to do it. I mean, we just saved our pennies as best we could and built it from scratch, uh, amortized as much as we could for that set because that was the that was the cherry on top of the Star Trek Sunday but it was 
it was hard. I mean, every every day it was we we were still gluing carpet pieces on as we were rolling. I realized what I missed most: the carpet. <laughs> People were like, "Was the most the most emotional experience to bring them on set?" It was like, "No, it was terrifying because we were good to go." It it was uh, just two days, terrified that I was going to screw it up. It wasn't until we cut it together and we added the music that I got to feel the, the thing. Make it so. I said. But I'm, I'm certainly glad we did it because it, it feels like fans responded to it. Mr. Data set a direct course for Earth, maximum warp. Hi, Captain. Picard season three has been crammed full of Star Trek Easter eggs, starships, and returning actors who haven't been seen since the 1990s in some cases. But there was a lot more that Metallus and his team would have liked to include if they had the time and the budget. This is President Anton Chekhov of the United Federation of Planets. It turns out the President of the United Federation of Planets is actually original series player Pavel Chekhov's son. Anton Chekhov. Broadcasting on all emergency channels. And while actor Walter Koenig voices the character in the opening moments of the final episode, there could have been even more to the role. I was never that young. I wanted to see Walter Koenig on screen. That that was one thing we just didn't have time for. Of course, some old Enterprise D crew members were also paid homage to this season. Like when we saw that Dr. Pulaski now has a ship named after her or when Tasha Yar's memorial hologram shows up in Data's memories. And there was talk of bringing back even more legacy characters from the next generation at various stages of production, from Chief O'Brien to Barkley and beyond. Again, and it, it just comes down to time and money. Yeah. Uh, you know, Barkley, we would have had them all. We talked. There wasn't a name that you could throw at me that we did not bring up at some point. And while most of the core cast of Picard's first two seasons are not in season three, one character that had close ties to Data did almost make her return. I, I really wanted a, a scene where Data met Soji. And that scene instead became Brent's pitch, which is, what if it's therapy with Deanna Troy? Which I thought was kind of phenomenal. And I wept. It gave both Troy a, a great final scene and um, and Data. Same time tomorrow? Yes, yes. Can't wait. Then there's Commander Ro Laren, who seemed to die in the terrific episode five. Oh. It turns out that the writers purposely left her fate a little more open-ended than it might have seemed at first, as the communicator chirps off for a few seconds before she's seemingly killed. In the original script, Ro Laren had survived, um, was, had been beamed off um, and, uh, of, the, of the thing. And uh, we, uh, Picard and Seven um, were moving through uh, the USS Intrepid and found uh, 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 all the prisoners, including Tuvok, um, all the people who were doppelgang doppelgangers, and Ro Laren was one of them, and it was a great reunion. Um, and but we ran out of time, okay, uh, and money, and we had to deal with with, with Michelle. Uh, and so that was probably the biggest loss. That was unfortunate. And speaking of characters who we thought were gone for good. The return of Elizabeth Dennehy's Shelby was a cause for great celebration for fans who never forgot when she came on board the Enterprise back in the best of both worlds and steamrolled right over Riker. If you can't make the big decisions, Commander, I suggest you make room for someone who can. Is Shelby definitely dead? No. It, look, I have a rule in television that unless you see somebody gasp their last breath, and eyes close and flat line for six minutes straight. They're not. They're not dead. Um, but you need to feel uncomfortable. That yeah, the, did a legacy character just get iced in that moment and be scared because the board just took over? But no, we from that moment with Elizabeth Dennehy, we're like, show comes back. You're coming back. Of course you're coming back. <laughs> She's awesome. By the end of the Picard finale, it's clear that the show has been setting up new adventures with an entirely new crew consisting of Captain Seven, 
First Officer Rafi Massacre, Counselor to the Captain Jack Crusher, and Helmsman Sidney LaForge. Captain Seven, we're cleared for war. Metalos confirms that the Enterprise F, seen in the previous episode under the command of Admiral Shelby, was subsequently decommissioned. And so the USS Titan is rechristened as the new Starship Enterprise, specifically the Enterprise G. Plenty of letters left in the alphabet. We had toyed with it being called Picard at the end for 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 a bit, um, but ultimately, for the legacy of the show, and for Seven of Nine specifically, being the next captain of the Enterprise with Rafi as first officer, and 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 the passing the torch of the next generation to the very next generation, it just had to be Enterprise. Fans have already been campaigning for a spin-off to Picard called Star Trek Legacy, and the bones of such a show are now in place. Not to mention the fact that Picard Season 3 recently made it into the top 10 of the Nielsen streaming charts, a feat that no Star Trek show has done since the franchise was relaunched on TV in 2017. I would love nothing more than to see the story of Captain Seven and uh, Rafi, First Officer, and Jack Crusher and the LaForge sisters, and, uh, you know, um, and Riker, and Worf, and Beverly, and, uh, uh, and Jordy, uh, uh, all of the, all of these characters, and Marina, I'd love to see the, 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 and then, and Deep Space Nine characters, I would love nothing more to see the continuation of the 25th century characters. Um, Hopefully one day, you know, maybe fan excitement would, would get us there, but at the, at press time, there's nothing in development. Still, we already have a hint of where such a series might go. Look at you, a chip off the old block. And it starts with the one and only Q. Q? I thought you were dead. Uh oh. Despite having been killed off last season, but things are never that simple with John Delancey's character, are they? Simple name for a complicated being. To me, it was just like, there's no better way to end than at the beginning, right? That, that's how we started Encounter at Farpoint. And the, and the, the idea of, of him seeing Picard's kid and saying, yeah, your father's trial's over, but yours just begun, felt like the right way to end and begin the, the next story. You see, yours, Jack, has just begun. Until that next story does begin, check out our video on why Patrick Stewart had to be wrong for Picard to finally succeed. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe to IGN for all of your Star Trek needs.